Mr. Chair, I thank the Honorable Member for the question. But I think, Mr. Chair, this is one thing that every one of us in this House as lawmakers should hold a common view on. Diana must get value for money on any project that is implemented. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chair, this project had its revised completion date, 31st of December, 2018. Original completion date was supposed to be since 2015. We are at September 2020, and we don't have this project completed as yet. Within the first 14 days of assuming office, myself and my colleague engage the consultants, the contractor, the project engineer, and the CGIA officials themselves. And we did a thorough walkthrough and investigation of what really are the problems, why this airport is not complete. Last week, Friday night, I brought to this House's attention, sir, the massive reduction in the scope that was signed. And I would like to remind this House, sir, that when the PPPC left government in May of 2015, we had 138 million US dollars design and build contract, a loan from the China Exim Bank on 12 million US dollars to be provided from the government of Ghana, $150 million contract. This should have seen an extended runaway, new, not rehabilitated, new terminal building with a capacity to accommodate eight air bridges, extended aprons, facilities for power generation and fuel storage, a modernized airport. When we left government, that was the contract that was in place. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I require an apology from this member at this time, who is referring to me as a liar because I will speak of him in the most degrading manner if he does not withdraw it. Mr. Speaker, I demand an apology from the Honorable David Patterson for referring to me as a liar because I will expose him here today, sir. I demand an apology. Honorable Member, Mr. Patterson, this is the third time in spite of two observations I've made with respect to your use of that particular word, and now you use it again. I think I think you ought to offer not only the Honorable Member to the entire House of the You can withdraw an apology, sir. Could you please... We are asking for an apology to the Honourable Member. Sir, we withdraw the word. And an apology. Economical. An apology, sir. Sir, we withdraw the word as you are. An apology. Sir, sir we withdraw sir, the word. Well, thank you very much, sir, for your observation. The thank host you. will have to deal with this afterwards. Honourable Minister, please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, we left government in May 2015. The Chinese contractor made a claim for 37 million US dollars that was not granted by us. We left government in May, and by July 
after the APNU AFC government came to office. Under the stewardship of the Honorable David Patterson, a settlement for 23 million US dollars plus was met after three days of no negotiations. And sir, Mr. Mr. The, Chair, details, Mr. the details Mr. of Chair. those negotiations and the results are available. Mr. Chair. And sir, Honorable, eventually, Honorable Member, are you raising an uh, uh, sir, there's a point just standing out of 40. Yes, can you please now state what the point of order is? Sir, well, the elucidation, sir, the point of order in elucidation. Uh, honorable member, the honorable minister will have to yield, but I have to ask him. Honorable sir, I'm not minister, prepared to yield. Honorable member, the honorable minister is not prepared to yield. Sir, when we have honorable much. members being discourteous, thank you very I much. I don't think those minister, courtesies please. should be extended. I'm not yielding. And sir, that contract, because of the claim that was made, that was negotiated by a team under the supervision of the then Minister of Public Infrastructure, saw an addendum to the contract, which meant 23 million US dollars was subtracted from the contract because of that claim. So from the time that addendum was made, the whole world knew you couldn't get the airport that you signed for at 138 plus 12. So what was the deal? Lots of things that should have been happening at the airport didn't happen. You didn't get a new terminal building. And I noticed the Honorable Member made a public disclosure about an option that came to him when he tried to say that I was being untruthful. But Mr. Speaker, in that option that he met, did not allow for rehabilitative terminal. It required a new terminal to facilitate seven air bridges. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chairman, and in July, those negotiations went completed, and by October, we had a new uh, uh, amended contract. The state of affairs are that rather than having a modern airport, we had a rehabilitated airport. Let me tell you, Mr. Speaker, the airline that operate there have no space for offices that were built or remodeled, they are still operating in some old areas without proper facilities. The roof is leaking. Sir, there were a whole lot of reusing. A contract that was supposed to be designed and built became a rehabilitation work. And this National Assembly it's not only the first time that they are hearing about this project. Because while we sat in opposition benches, we questioned the honorable member while he was the minister uh, at meetings like these in the Committee of Supply. But now the reality is there, sir. We even had to come to this National Assembly for monies to be appropriated separately from the 150 million that was already available to purchase two more air bridges. So even the additional four, the additional two air bridges that are there, it put the project cost up by more than $300 million. That was appropriated by this National Assembly in the last parliament. Mr. Speaker, what is worse is that now we have four air bridges when we should have had eight. But even the four are dysfunctional at times. And that is the state of affairs. Mr. Speaker, just a few days ago, <coughs> His Excellency the President and His Excellency the Ambassador of China visited the airport 
along with the project engineer, the contractor, and the consultant, where His Excellency had an opportunity to see firsthand for himself the state of affairs at the airport. We are confident, sir, that with those interventions and based upon commitments that His Excellency, the Ambassador of the Republic of China, made when he visited with me, sir, that the Chinese government expresses the same amount of concern as the Guyanese people because they are concerned about their own partnership and image that a company from China is embroiled in a matter where a, such a national project is under such kinds of scrutiny. I can assure the National Assembly and the Honorable Member that is asking the question. We will continue to engage China Harbor, the government and people of China, and out of that collaboration, whatever needs to be rectified to ensure that we get a modern Chedi Jagan International Airport, it will come to pass under this administration. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, secondly, I indicated to this Honorable House on Friday night when I closed the debate that based upon the estimates coming in from consultants that were engaged by the Chedi Jagan International Airport Corporation outside of the modernization project. This is not a modernization project now. This is outside just to fix things that were not included in the contract we will need in excess of $1.3 billion to do those works. Mr. Speaker, it's a, Mr. Chairman, it's a matter that is under active consideration. We are not happy about it. But with our leadership and our approach to doing business guided by principles of value for money and good partnership, we expect to get this project back on its feet to deliver for the people of Guyana. I thank you very much, Mr. Chairman.